So uh, I, I was sharing indeed my agenda here. So we have, we're gonna, we're gonna play a little bit, uh, uh, just a small game. And then what we're going to do is try to map, map the technical world and the real world. Uh, so um, this is something that I've, I've, uh, we've been working on. And, and as I start, as I build software, I realized that, hey, we're actually using the real world to map what is happening in the tech world. So let me just find a way to map that out for you. So it makes it easier for you to get the full picture. So, and then I'm gonna show you like everything start with a programming language and, and you can literally take that concept and compare countries and companies. Uh, like Belgium, Netherlands and France have something in common, but you will also realize that companies like Apple, Microsoft and Google aren't really different than Belgium, the Netherlands and France. So yeah, I know it's, it seems weird, but it is, it is possible. So, uh, 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 and then I will show you how you go from a language to a framework. What is a framework indeed? Uh, and we're gonna just take a bit of uh, a few minutes to talk about the .NET framework. If you don't know it, it's okay. If you know it, I will show you that there are a lot of things you don't know about it. But if you knew ab uh, about everything, I want to talk to you just afterward because we, we, we might need your help here and there. Uh, and then we're gonna ha have another game because uh, we I want you to learn and then to show me that you you learn uh, uh, and then I'm gonna explain you a little bit about the tech jargon so let's let's get started so um I'm gonna share with you a link I'm gonna share with you a link and we uh, that link there let me make sure that it's, it's right here so I'm going to play a game here so there are people from and uh, there are people from antwerp joining right so i'm gonna share with you a link here so let me let me quickly start with that the idea there is like i'm going to uh uh challenge i'm i'm, I'm gonna I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna run a challenge for 90 seconds and i want you to to help me uh, figure out which things I did right or, or not, okay? So uh, it's 90 seconds, and once I'm done, I'm gonna share that link with you so you can also play, and we're gonna see which one did better than the other. So go. So what is iOS? Operating system, uh, Spring, uh, Java backend framework, Sketch, mm, software for designer, so, so uh, SAP, well, ERP, CRM, ERPs, .NET Framework, C Sharp, Programming Language, Microsoft Azure Cloud, Java uh, Backend Language, I believe, SQL Server is a database, Amazon Web Services, I can hear you say Cloud Provider, you, you're still there? So if you, if you can help, go, go ahead, uh, React, Frontend, Safari, uh, Internet Browser, SQL, it's a programming language. Now people would be like, no, it's not. Frontend framework. Xamarin is a mobile framework. Python, data science or programming language? Yeah, I'm listening. Language, okay, okay. PL, okay, okay. Programming language. Uh, operating system or code editor. I will take the code editor. Google Chrome, internet browser. Mac OS, uh, huh. operating system, thank you. ASP.NET backend, seven second uh, framework for Angular, React Native mobile framework, and ah, okay. So um, I'm just gonna quickly uh, create, um, add my name here and then say, so that's, that's my thing. I'm just gonna share that with you. How, what, what is my score? So I'm just gonna do this. So I scored 21, right? Out of 50 somehow. And so there is someone actually here who scored 69. So that must be crazy. However, it's gonna be your turn now. I'm gonna create a challenge and we're gonna call that webinar, uh, webinar uh, uh, 
number one. So I'm going to say that uh, leverage uh, leverage tech knowledge. Right. And my name here is going to be uh, Davy here. So it's going to be your turn in a few seconds. And I'm going to give you exactly two minutes to to play the challenge as well. So that's, that's it. I copy a link. Now I'm going to share that link with you. And it's going to be your turn. OK, so one, two, three, go. Two minutes. I mean, let me take a, a timer, two minutes, and it's your turn. Let's go. We have it. Two minute timer. That's going to give us a, a leaderboard for our session only. OK. 90 seconds. OK, timer is there. One point, one minute and 20 seconds. So we're almost there, 50 seconds. If you're done, just say you're done here below. If you're done, just say I'm done or done here. Yeah, and then we, we're going to uh, continue here. So. So I'm going to let it run so I can see uh, who did what. So 20 seconds. Come on, people. Who's done? You done? OK. OK. Wow. That was, uh, that was pretty fast. Fantastic, people. Very good. So who won? See? Two. So who has won? So before I show who has won here, <laughs> can you can you share your score? Seventeen, my gosh. Okay, okay, thirty, Kelly. Wow. Okay, fantastic. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, you can you can you can play that with your team. You can play that Zenel thirty three. My goodness, I scored twenty one. So, but to my defense, I was. <laughs> You know, okay, you won. So uh, most of you actually beat the hell out of me. So uh, that's that's uh, that's fantastic. Okay, look, um, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna share the the the, the leaderboard in a few seconds. But let's co let's continue here. So the it, the next step in your agenda is basically um, to do the mapping of the, the the real world and the tech world. This is going to sound super easy, but I guarantee it is actually super easy. And um, so we're going to talk about Belgium, the Netherlands, and France, right? Do we have people from France here? Yeah, we do. Okay. No? Raise your hand if you're from France here. Okay, never mind. Uh, so here is the way we're going to compare them. We're going to talk in terms of languages spoken in these countries. So, which country, which languages are natively spoken in Belgium? Get uh, some uh, some input there. So, we have indeed Dutch, French, and German, right? In the Netherlands, we have, I'm curious, I'm curious to see what you put for the Netherlands there. So what do we have? Uh, Anlorse NL, well, NL, well, uh, not entirely sure about that one, but let's, let's, uh, let's, let's validate that. Um, so in the Netherlands, 
you have Dutch as a language, and there is a language called West uh, 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 Frisian. Okay, let me make sure that I, you see that. Okay, so yeah, the, if you if it's new to you, you're welcome. Yeah, it's official. It's an official language here in the Netherlands. And then you have French in France, right? Those are native languages, right? So what do you do? What can you do with a native language? Like if in, in any country you go and you speak the language of the country natively, what could you actually do in that country? Let me know. What, what, what's, what's your input there? You could be a doctor. You could, do, you could go shopping, right? You could literally do anything that country has to offer, right? I can see some input there. You can write a book. You can um, date local girls, right? You can communicate. Uh, you're able to survive in that country. But what I'm trying to say there, surviving won't probably be needed in the way because you speak natively the language. It's not like, okay, you arrive in China, you don't speak Chinese, and then you're like, okay, which language can I use here to actually survive? Like if you're in Belgium and you speak French, literally anything the country has to offer, you can have access to it without needing a translator. And that's the key word there. By living in the country, you can speak the language without needing a translator to get help from a lawyer, for example, or when you go gro grocery shopping or... So that's what I meant by native language, like the name of the street are in that language. So you don't need a translator to be like, OK, which street is that? And what does that mean? Am I going toward the right direction? That's being part, speaking the native language. However, speaking a language also uh, 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 as a country, you say, OK, uh, 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 Dutch, uh, the Netherlands, for example, you speak Dutch and West Friesland. One of the things. Um, uh, you end up doing is like, okay, the, uh, the Netherlands or France are, they're, they're, they're not super, I mean, France is, France is big, but let's think, for example, in terms of business. If you could only speak Dutch to do business in the Netherlands or in, in Belgium, you could only speak Dutch, French, and German, what do you think would be the, 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 the problem for the country, like think in terms of Belgium or the Netherlands or even France, what will be the, the, the problem if the only language you could use to actually do business or live in that country was French? What do you think will be the issue? Yeah, someone said no international business. Yeah. You can only stay in that country. That's, that's, that's for sure. What else do you have there, people? Think, think in terms of you, 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 running, you, you, you are the one running the country, and then you're like, okay, we have 12 million people in the country, but um, uh, we need more capital. We need more to attract businesses. We need to attract talent, right? Talking about talent, technical recruiter. We need to attract talent. So at some point, you, you will exhaust the resource of the country, and you're gonna need to look outside of the country to attract people to do business with 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 with, with uh, 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 to literally extend the reach. So now, if a country goes toward that direction, what do you think the country will do? What do you think a country should do to make sure that their country is welcoming to any business, any external business, or anything like that? What do you think a country will do in terms of language? I let's focus just on the language. There are many, many things you could do there. But in terms of spoken languages, what could a country do? OK. <clears throat> Open borders, EU. Yeah, that's a pretty good. Find a university. Uh, Andrea just mentioned use English, right? Or hire a translator. Uh, uh, Michael, it's Michiel, right? Michiel, I believe hiring a translator, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good solution, but it's also a costly solution in a way. Because <laughs> uh, you, you're going to hire a translator that's going to follow you up everywhere. That's, that's possible. 
But indeed, I'm going to take Andrea's solution. So as a country, you're like, okay, we want to attract uh, these external businesses, talent. So let's make sure that we, we uh, uh, install in the country a language. I'm, I'm saying install, but you're going to understand that a bit later why I say install. It's by installing the language in the country, making the language at least not first class language, but at least second class language, which means that not everywhere you will be able to get by by speaking that language, but at least most of the things in the country, you could do them. You could, you could do them speaking the language. And indeed, most of these countries, or at least all of them, chose English because you will say, well, English is the, biz uh, it's the language of, the, of business, right? International business. So you go for English. And believe me, this is actually what happened at our schools. Uh, Andrea, I think you probably from uh, Italy or uh, I, I don't know exactly, I, I believe. I'm, I just, I'm just assuming here, but you work in Amsterdam, right? Fantastic. You work in Amsterdam, right? So you, you work, even though you probably speak Dutch by now, you work mostly in English, but in the country where uh, that's not the, the, the first, the, the native language there. So what I'm trying to say there is what you see there, believe me, does happen in the tech world, like word by word. It's literally the same thing. So now let's go into the tech world. Let's go into the tech world. <clears throat> so um, we're going to compare countries and companies. So the way we do it, we're going to take three small startup in, in, in the US and we're going to compare a little bit the same idea with them. So it's your turn. Which is what? What are the spoken languages spoke? Uh, 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 what What are the languages spoken in these three countries, or companies? If you uh, like, think think in terms of like, okay, these are countries, and if you live in this country and you speak those languages, you can literally do anything those countries have to offer. So, who's saying what? Uh, Adler say iOS. Well, oh, well, 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 we have a problem there. I want you to, I want you to say the name of the, the, the country. So the name of the company and the language next to each other. Because, okay, I see K to say Google and then GS. Like, what, what's that? Uh, uh, Zara says C Sharp and Microsoft. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Adler, you said iOS. But Apple, iOS, oh, we have a problem there. Microsoft.net, oh, no, 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 no. Swift at Apple, Swift is a language, yeah, Amiril, indeed. Apple, Swift, so meaning that if you speak Swift, Apple, uh, Objective-C again for, for Apple. Uh, Google Python, that, that, that does work as well. So what I'm trying to say there is the fact that as it, think in terms of the country, the country example we mentioned, it's exactly the same parallel you should be able to do by saying, what are the native uh, language spoken in this country? And here, indeed, within the, 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 the Apple world, you have two main languages, Objective-C and Swift. Google, you can do uh, 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 Java, uh, Go, uh, uh, so Andrea mentioned Golang. Go, Go is the equivalent of Golang. It's a, it's exactly the same thing. Python, and and then on Microsoft side you have C sharp, F sharp, and many other languages, right? But the same the same problem appears for each of them. Saying okay, at some point there's only a a, a few uh, uh, people. There's so few people that can be doing Objective-C and Swift, and another group that does Java and Go. But then they're like, okay, how could we attract more business? So before, I, before we go into that, I want to ask you this question. What do you think, in, 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 for, for countries we understand, it's to attract a, a, a new talent, new investment, to be able to communicate with the external world. But in terms of companies, I will want you. I want you to give me uh, 
to answer this question, what will be the incentive for companies to do so, to open up their ecosystem for other languages to, 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 to survive in their ecosystem? What is it? What, what do you think is it? Uh, use frameworks, uh, the pool of talent becomes limited. Anything else? Uh, uh, one base, one base language. Wow, Martina, that's a that's a good one. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so they said they want to attract other developers. So that's. Let me take the Arno's Arno's point there. What do you think they want to attract other developers? Why do Apple needs to attract other developers? Really, they're doing well. There is. It's a trillion. It's a. It's a one trillion or even maybe two now, a, a, a one trillion company, um, why would they need to attract more developers, do you, you think? Just give me an idea. It's, it's, it, it is literally your turn there. Think in terms of being the, you the CEO of Apple or Google or Microsoft and you're like, we should attract more developers. Why, why would you do that? So someone says, um, if they open it up, it becomes more accessible, accessible and popular. Uh, yeah, new idea and expertise. No, okay. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you uh, uh, staying ahead of competition. That's a good one. Diversity in business create better offering. So uh, Victor just touched on something there, and obviously all the ideas are good. But I'm gonna give you one. That is really uh, that that can also be uh, uh, added into the list. Uh, you all have a phone, right? How many times you 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 feel like okay, I have an iPhone and I want to move to an Android. I want to go to a, 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 um, a, an Android phone, and then you feel like, damn, that's gonna be really hard. Because I have all my contact, my phone is synced with my my watch, uh, my uh, and then it's all connected with with my 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 Mac. So that ecosystem there is it's an ecosystem like a country or a company can create to make sure that you feel at ease, everything works seamlessly in that ecosystem, right? So, uh, uh, so as a company. The incentive is to have more developers to build more apps for that ecosystem. To basically say, like, the more developers I have, the more apps I have in my ecosystem, the more end user will be there using my ecosystem, and the more uh, revenue I'm gonna make. It's just that simple. You, you get the point. So, what what will be the what will, will then be the next logical step for a company? Well, the the logical step is to say, let's add a language. They can say, okay, let's let's uh, teach everyone Objective C. Don't try with me. I'll be like, no, I don't want Objective C, man. You you keep it for your for yourself. Swift. It it's a it's a beautiful language, but no no no. I, I have I have already too many things to learn that I, to learn uh, Swift. However, they go the other way, the way we did with English. They're like, okay, what is one of the most popular language spoken by developers out there that they can make a second class or even a first class languages in their ecosystem? Okay, one, two, three. Which which language you think? It is. I'm talking about at this stage. Oh, okay. Mm, Java, Java, Java. Mm, okay. Miril, you just said React Native. We're talking about language. We're going to make a link between the language and the framework because React Native isn't a language. React Native is a framework that uses JavaScript as a language. We're going to make that link in a few seconds. So um, Leonard said Java. Well, you, Julie also said Java. Why Java? Yeah, okay. There is this assumption that Java works everywhere, right? But it's not the language Java that works everywhere. It's not the language. It's 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 um, 
a program that is built with Java, so the final thing that will work everywhere. But uh, uh, Java by itself, you're not going to use it in, within the Apple world. Apple doesn't like it, like not at all, not a bit. So forget about that. There might be some integration made by other uh, companies to make that work. But saying that Apple made the, the work to, to make Java available in their country, nope, forget about that part. You know that Java is actually owned by Oracle? That's, that's kind of the things that, that, that don't go down really well. So I'm going to give you one here. It's JavaScript, right? JavaScript is it's one of the language easy to learn. I'm not kidding. I mean, at least to, at least to start, because after a few, uh, <laughs> it's like any language. When, when I start learning Dutch, I was like, oh, and all this stuff, super easy. And then I discover like, okay, there is this thing called inversi. When you when you say um that and then you start reversing stuff, you're like, no, I, let's stop the let's stop the learning there. Okay, I'm still learning, but it's super hard. What I'm trying to say by that is the learning curve for Java, it picks like yeah, for JavaScript, it's super slow. You can learn like a lot of things at a pretty low level, but then it gets it gets a bit complicated later on. But the language is super easy. I can open my my. Uh, now, now uh, I'm talking with you right now. I can do programming in ja JavaScript without having to install anything. It's that easy. So, and JavaScript was back then already one of the most popular languages in the world. Millions of users. So as English, companies felt like if we make our platforms easy for JavaScript developer to build on top of it, so they're going to have way more application on their store. And now I go back to Michiel point saying, oh, React Native. Look, React Native wouldn't be a thing, a, a thing if uh, JavaScript wasn't allowed by Apple. You see what I'm trying to say there? It's really important to realize that uh, uh, you, uh, Andrea wouldn't be working in English in the Netherlands if the Dutch, like, the Dutch government didn't make English like um, uh, uh, like a, a, a language spoken in the country at a level where people can actually do things effectively, right? It's exactly the same thing. So we didn't invent anything as software engineer. Yeah, we did in a way, but we, we look at the world and we copy th those mechanisms and it's just the way it goes, right? So I, I want to get the sense of like, this is clear. Like, just say like it's clear, and then we we move on to the next the next part. Is that okay? Is that just a thumbs up or a thumbs down or something like that? Just to feel like we have the we have something rolling and it's it's becoming clear for you. Pretty good, pretty good people. So uh, now uh, we have the uh, the fact that JavaScript is one of the language, but over time there are other languages like, for example, C sharp or even Python that you could, you could start using in cross companies, meaning cross environment, right? And, 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 uh, and for companies like Google, Microsoft, they have adopted this open source mindset. I didn't say Apple for a good reason, because it's still a, like a pretty close environment, but do it, they're doing good, so they probably don't need it. However, if you see the shift Microsoft did, a few years back, they'd literally went, no, 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 completely closed source to, you know what, let's, uh, let's embrace the world. Let's embrace what comes out fr from, from, and that made things much open and you can do way more uh, than C sharp, F sharp or VB within the Microsoft world. So I just mentioned a few languages right there. Okay. So the next step is once you have a language, a language is a primitive thing. What do you do after? The next, the, 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 the logical step is, okay, I have a language. Let's, let me build a framework based uh, on, the, uh, on the language. So in a nutshell, what is a framework? That's basically the question. What is a framework in a real life? Um, a framework looks like this. That's a framework in real life. You know the person who used that? 
you, you know what that person will do, right? So they need to probably uh, do some uh, reparation at home. They won't go and buy and take a, a, um, a screwdriver. So they do the, the, the fix part of the thing with a screwdriver. And then they're like, oh, I need a meter. And then they walk to the shop and then buy a meter. And then they come and measure like, okay, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. And then they, they need another uh, things uh, to, to, to do something else that is related to the same activity. They just don't go back and forth. They take that framework and then they work with it, put it on the table, and then with one uh, uh, toolbox, they can do a range of tasks in the same area, right? That's really important to understand th this idea of a framework. So um, when I say that, I want to extend that to show you something even more interesting. You see that, that thing there, it's the, the um, my, 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 I have, a, my, my father calls that the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, ultimate, um, how, how do you say that? Uh, like a house, uh, house um, toolbox, like you, you need anything at, at home to do some reparations here. If you don't have it at home, you're doing something completely wrong. And someone suggested house essential. Thank you, Kate, that, that fantastic. So uh, uh, that's literally a framework, right? So uh, which kind of framework could you, could you mention in the real world? Could you give me some example of frameworks you use every day to get job done? Let's see, what do we have? Uh, no, in the real world, in, the, in your day to day, I know, I know, I can see ideal there, Angular, Kate, Angular. Yeah, we coming there, but I want to go to the, like in your day-to-day -day life, not on the technical part. Oven, Claudia said oven is a framework. A laptop, yeah, that's a very good one. An agenda, is an agenda a framework? Hmm, I will say if I add an agenda in, um, uh, like if if you take if you take for example uh, um, I'm gonna I'm, I don't know I'm gonna show you um, yeah like if you take a, a a tool that can do to do list agenda um, uh, you can schedule obviously all listed so think in terms of Outlook for example Outlook is a good framework to send email Andrea say a wallet a wallet is a framework. Mm hmm yeah okay that's a that's a uh, so you don't carry you don't have to always like okay I, I have a card over there and another card over there you can just put them the same place and then uh, be able to do anything payment related or like Julie uh, that's that's basically the killer a fully equipped kitchen it's a framework right it's already put together so when you enter there you know that anything you need to make something awesome in the kitchen is a frame it is already there and it's part of that kitchen framework right uh, so uh, 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 let, let let's continue here i'm gonna take that to the to the tech world now so we're going to talk about the dotnet framework so if you don't know the dotnet framework is not a big deal but what I'm going to show you with the .NET framework will apply to many other frameworks, right? So what is the .NET framework? Uh, first thing, it's not a programming language. No, it is not. So uh, the, the title of this, this, this uh, 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 webinar is to, to leverage the, 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 uh, the, the tech knowledge for sourcing, right? So I'm going to show you ways you can actually leverage what I'm about to show you right now. So look look what happened here. So when we say .NET framework, this is what the .NET framework look like. And I want, I give you a few seconds to actually uh, uh, look into it and I'll be right there because I need to, sh I need to show you where, where was that? Um, I need to show you something. Is it gone? Yeah, it's here. So um, here. We 
going to make sure that um, oh okay wow so in the meantime i'm just sharing with you the the the, the leaderboard here of the session the actual session my goodness wow arno zenel kelly my goodness chris wow very well done well really well done andrea really well done okay okay fantastic people so let's let's continue let's continue here so i, I was showing you the the uh, let me go back and share that. So I was I was showing you the the what the framework is here. So this is a .NET framework, and as you can see with the .NET framework, we can build desktop app, and below there is a technology called WPF or Windows Form. For this session, it doesn't matter. During the training, when we do the Tech Dragon training, we do explain them and, and map them to the real world as well. Web, I believe even if you don't use, you don't know what the .NET framework is, you probably saw this ASP.NET thing there. Cloud, mobile with Xamarin, gaming, IoT, and AI. What I'm showing you there is the .NET is a framework that contains other framework inside. And the main language used for that, it's called, someone, someone said that, I cannot hear you, so I can only read what you said, what you wrote. The main language there is, is indeed C sharp. Thank you, Muriel. It's indeed C sharp. So what is happening there is the fact that if you take the .NET framework like this, C sharp is the main language. So look at the link. The link is, I speak, um, I sp I'm, I'm speaking English with you right now. And um, it's not because I do speak English that I can be, I can go right now and do the, uh, the, uh, the job of a doctor or a pilot or a lawyer. Uh, they're awesome as jobs, but I don't speak those framework. These are frameworks that even as an English speaker, I don't speak those framework. So what I'm trying to give you as uh, the link between a framework and, and, uh, and, uh, and the language is the fact that the language will let, let you navigate many areas. But once you start going into specialization, Specialization is basically a framework. There is a framework behind any specialization. So you're going to need to learn the jargon behind that framework, th that specialization to get things done. Doesn't matter which language you speak. Um, uh, Adlor is a technical recruiter. Are you also, uh, uh, okay, like a basketball coach? Probably, um, I don't know, but maybe you are a, a, a basketball coach, but let's assume that you're not. Basketball coach is an entire framework that you're going to need to learn. So speaking the language doesn't mean you can actually do work with uh, anything uh, related to uh, C Sharp, for example. For example, I, I'm, a few years ago when I was starting my career, I was doing C Sharp development. And I would receive messages from people saying, hey, I'm looking for a C Sharp developer. I'd be like, I just assume that you're saying you're looking for a web developer, right? Because back then, C Sharp was like a lot in the ASP uh, forums and things like that, and it was the most popular thing out there. So that could have been, but with C Sharp, I can build games. I can build so many other things. I can build a robot with C Sharp. I can build AI models and, and pipeline with C Sharp. But that's it's because I know the language, but it's, it's not because I know the language that I can do all of them. In my C-sharp time, I was doing only web framework, only the web part of C-sharp. So talking to you tech recruiter saying, let's talk, let's talk with the hiring manager who says, hey, I'm looking for a C-sharp developer. That's where you shine. If they stop there, they just open a, like a, like a like a window for you to be like, okay, uh, let's let's see what you really need there. You're looking for a C sharp developer, okay? We just assume that it's already .NET because C sharp 
it's under the it's under the .NET framework. So that's you just make that assumption. There is no need to repeat that because otherwise you will still look silly. Like C sharp, obviously it's .NET. So let's let's forget the obvious part. Now let's go to the non obvious part. The non obvious part is to say. Are you looking for someone to, for like web applications or are you looking for someone to help you build XYZ? Because by, 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 by pinpointing the framework behind, you look much better. You speak their language. You, 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 you understand that it's not because you're a C-sharp developer that you can actually do everything there or you're actually doing everything there. It's C-sharp developer means I speak the language, I speak French. But what do you do really with that language? And that's where the conversation becomes even more interesting. I had that with a, a, a recruiter once, uh, Kenneth. Uh, he's probably not there in the call, but uh, that one, one of the relations we build over time because the way he will ask me the question, he just wasn't assuming that, hey, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm looking for a C sharp.NET developer. Yeah, that's the first thing he wrote, but then he went on and said to build web application with X, Y, Z. And then you start, you start uh, 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 narrowing the funnel and that becomes way more interesting than just saying a generic C-sharp developer, right? Okay, so same thing. When you say I'm looking for a Java developer, that's the same thing. For what? Do you know that the Java developer can actually build the mobile application? You know which uh, which uh, which kind of uh, mobile application we, you can build with Java? Bonus point. Give me give me that. You know you know that one? No. Okay. Android. You can build Android applications with Java, right? So, but to 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 to, to be more precise, there the thing you need to understand is the fact that each of these framework. Let's go back here. Each of them, if you say, for example, someone is a mobile developer in uh, in uh, in .NET, you there is a name for that. So you will call it like Xamarin. If you go back to the the previous slide, you see it here in the middle. It's it's Xamarin. If someone say, "Hey, I'm a web developer in .NET," somehow they're telling you, "I'm using ASP.NET." But if they say, "Hey, I'm an ASP.NET developer," You can reverse the thing by saying, okay, that person is actually does C sharp. But you might be wrong because, as I'm going to show you, there is not only one language you can use within the .NET framework, there are many others, up to 70 plus languages in there. So, C sharp is the most popular, is by far the most popular, but there are other languages spoken in the same thing. So, you can compare C Sharp uh, and all those languages and Belgium, meaning that in Belgium, yeah, Dutch, German, French, which means that if you want to do something in the, in, in the country, you just have to say, okay, uh, if you speak the three languages, some of you do, you can then go like, oh, what is the language spoken by that person? And then you start speaking in French with that person you will still achieve the same thing. So the framework, as long as you know the framework, it doesn't matter the language, you, could, you will be able to express yourself uh, uh, fluently in that language. And it's the same thing. If someone say, I'm a C-sharp developer and I do web, and for example, your client says, hey, I'm looking for a, a, a ASP.NET developer. Okay, they're difficult to find. Wink, wink, you know that. But you can, and then you meet a, a, an engineer that says, I do, I, I've been doing VB.NET, which is another language in the .NET framework. And then you can actually tell your client or your hiring manager like, hey, um, I have someone that speaks uh, uh, ASP, uh, VB, meaning that person understand the .NET framework, has experience with that, but, uh, uh, is it okay for you to even take that person in an interview or give it a try? Because the only thing the person is going to need to learn is how to write the same thing he was writing in VB in C Sharp, if, if needed. Or the company will be like, oh, actually, we can just do VB because 
it's the same as the same environment they don't they won't need to learn anything just use the knowledge they have on top of what we have already and there you go deal closed i'm not kidding this is a real life scenario that i witnesses with people that trying to place engineers or trying to find jobs for people if you ever to understand those, those these little nuance what is a language what is a framework you're already pretty far in the understanding of that that tech world so i have to push because we're almost done there so um there are other frameworks like laravel spring rails django angular react c sharp and um, c sharp did i just say c sharp okay sorry i'm out <laughs> okay dot uh, net dot net i meant so what i'm trying to say there is you can see uh, in bracket i put the language associated with the framework. So when someone says I'm, I'm a Spring developer, which they wouldn't say, don't look at them even when they say that. But if someone says I'm a Spring developer or you see a Spring on someone's CV and there is no Java, you should be able to tell the person, hey, uh, do you do Java as well? Because it's then a missing piece on their resume right so that's basically the idea like if someone say i, I do rails I, I build web application with rails assumption there is ruby there so if there is no rubies on their cv you should be, be, be able to say that hey we have some missing element there right and how look how 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 cool you're gonna look when you you can you can actually na uh, nail down this kind of detail but uh, those are not really difficult to nail down, right? Uh, uh, we can always help with that. So let's close this. So I just explained this part while I was doing the previous slides. How could you leverage this knowledge? So uh, yeah, uh, understanding the link between them helps you have a, a much fluent conversation with a hiring manager or uh, uh, like a technical people. And, and now I just spend time on, on mostly software development, but there's the entire ecosystem, infrastructure. And, and the main thing I want you to take away from whatever I say now is it starts with the language and then you can do many things. You need that language. If there is no language, assume that we, were, we weren't speaking Dutch or French or English. Good luck making the world we build ha happen. And we need a framework at some point because the role of the framework is avoiding repetition. Once you've done once, twice, three, third time, then you start putting a framework together. And the next time someone asks, hey, how can I do this? Hey, there you, there you go, here's the framework. And you do that every day. You build processes to, to automate things you've done once, twice, three times. And we do exactly the same thing as software engineers. So you just need to know what is the language really spoken in your world and which kind of framework are you using to get to make things happen, to, to get things done. Okay, we good? Okay, so let's close that. So uh, in, in a few, in a few key, uh, key points here is uh, uh, how could you leverage that? Experts are credible and people want you what want to work with you when you're an expert want when they feel at ease with you i'm not a technical recruiter but this morning funny enough i received a message from a software engineer saying hey i saw that you're a tech experienced tech recruiter and uh here is the the issue that i have and i'm looking for a job in that specific area and i haven't replied but i'll be like i'm a software engineer like you bro <laughs> so uh, we, we're on the same boat here um so and uh, candidate side you you know exactly how to trigger them on a technical level. There are many other things on in terms of recruitment, I guarantee, but on the technical side, if you're able to narrow down these things, I'm not kidding, you trigger a developer anytime. It doesn't matter which, which level they have. If you're able to have this kind of conversation in terms of uh, the, the usage of the technology, the, the languages, the, 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 the different, um, the different um, uh, uh, um, uh, possibilities that exist in that sphere, you're, you're miles ahead of a, a, anyone else, right? And then with clients, um, just 
build exclusive business with them because now you know that hey that that client me i work exclusively for many years with only Kenneth and another recruiter because i knew that when i talked to them they they will be able to find me the, the right mission as a freelance back then when i was working uh, on my own right and uh so that's basically it there so um bonus how are java and javascript related there is a typo there but yeah let's let's tell me how, how just to finish on this what do you think is the how are they related mm. Claudia said not really, Claudia. They're not related. Calvin is writing and both programming languages. That's that's fantastic. So yeah, they're both programming languages. Yeah, uh, language C. Mm, yeah, they borrow in a way the syntax of the language C. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, okay. So um, as a joke, indeed, people always say like, well, no, they're not. And because even a few a few weeks, a few days ago, I still received a message saying like, hey, I saw that you have a lot of experience in Java. I was like, who? Who are you talking about? Are you talking about? <laughs> that wasn't me. Okay. So let's close this. Game time. Okay. I want you to give it another try with the challenge, the link I shared with you. Because now you know you know a lot. Whoa, that's a lot of comment. <laughs> so I want you to give it another try for two minutes to see uh, how far, uh, far how far you learn uh, uh, so far and improve your score. So let's give it another try. It, and I'm going to put a two minute timer. There you go, people. Let's do this. Two minutes. Ninety seconds. Okay. Okay, we're almost there. Minute. And I have two more things to show you before uh, we break, and uh, and uh, hopefully that will that was useful for you. Sixty second. Okay, people, forty seconds. Let's do this. If you're done, just say done down there so we know who's there and please share your score. Share your score. Okay, 20 seconds. You should mostly be done now. Uh, 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, four, two, one, done. Okay, fantastic people. Uh, we're done here. So, did you improve anyone, Chris? Chris, you did improve. Uh, that's that's uh, that's really good. You did improve there. So that's fantastic. Um, so let me make sure that we can uh, quickly check who. Uh, oh, I was already there. So let me go back. Uh, okay, there is a little bit of. So I will I will be able to actually see what what we did uh in the second round here but uh if you improve that's fantastic that's really good okay so let's close uh let's uh let's uh close this uh quickly um so the 
uh, what I just shown you there is part of uh, the. Uh, it's or uh, it's just a small snippet of the training we provide uh, at at hackages um, for for technical people. We've been doing that already for uh, a, a year and a half, and uh, last year indeed we we visited quite some companies in the Netherlands and Belgium face to face, and then since the Corona thing, Corona thing, we do, we're doing that online as well and. Part of the training indeed involve understanding programming languages and how they're related to frameworks. And, um, and then we start building uh, a, a better um, vocabulary to how to speak to developers or even how to speak to hiring manager. And for that, uh, during, during the session, we're using a tool. We're using a tool that we built um, uh, where um, basically uh, what happened there is you, get, you can create a, a technical stack so you can create it manually and then we analyze the stack for different applications. So you have an understanding of like, okay, here are the possibilities and this tool can actually help you uh, 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 write better job description or just have a better conversation with the developer because the tool can help you identify the missing element uh, to, to, to point uh, to. So for example, I drop a CV here uh, and then I'm like, okay, that's a CV. When I go inside the tool, I will be able to see on the left, the resume that was uploaded. And then on the right, a little bit, the, the text stack of the person and uh, how uh, 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 that person indeed uh, could be represented in terms of technology. When, when, when we, when we, during the training, we teach you how to understand these things. So they became much easier for you like okay linux shouldn't be there or it should be there or um that person there has more front-end experience than back-end experience but that is just by reading a cv but during the training we help you identify these kind of things and the tools will just be a way to assist you to make quicker decision uh, and and once you understand them better you'll be able to add new categories let's say we want to add front-end and then we had a front-end category added, um, and then we can see that, okay, uh, we have programming language. It's like that person there may, does, for example, Python, be like, okay, let me add Python to, to, to his resume. So you announcing, that could just be you on the phone calling a, a, a developer and be able to add this kind of element on top of their resume. So uh, the conversation is smoother because you can picture right away what what it's uh, uh, the, the person it's all about and then uh, yeah indeed okay that the person doesn't do java you can remove you can remove this um, this element and obviously uh, for much bigger resume you can actually have a bigger space and see uh, what um, what uh, 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 have a full view and the possibility to share that with a hiring manager or a candidate, but the same tool works for uh, um, uh, to a job a job description, right? So that will help you better align a job description and then possibility to actually uh, visit all the stack. So that that's that's basically a, a, a tool we use during the training. Um, if you if you want to have access to that tool. Uh, outside of the training i'm gonna give you a way for uh, for that to, so you can obviously i want you to join the training if you if you feel like this was helpful please join us you for this training you will get 10 percent off the the session and uh, you can send an email to arno or uh, if you go on the tech jargon your website you should be able also to see that so we also have an affiliated plan where um uh, uh, you can you can actually if you think this is useful. Some people in the net in, who came to the training really find this useful. So um, uh, you can just share the link with your team and then get uh, get um, um, uh, the, the 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 link for the training here. So I'm getting some yeah, very good. And then let's say. Um, uh, that uh, I'm gonna just share with you the the link. So if you want to, uh, if you if you want to uh, ref, uh, refer people to join the training, so you can just uh, do that, and that can also bring you some uh, extra 
extra elements. So let me go back here and then make sure that I share that with you over here, right? So that's pretty good. And then, um, yeah, what's coming? So in uh, it basically two weeks, we have uh, another webinar where we're going to be using this tool to analyze a technical stack, like from a CV. We're going to go from a CV and then be able to say like, okay, what is missing? What could we add? How could we make this conversation much smarter by looking at a resume? So when you pick up the phone and you talk with that developer next time, or even on the spot, you should be able to uh, uh, make uh, it should be able to make your work much easier, identifying things that are missing or, uh, yeah, just better understand the ecosystem in which the developer live, right? And uh, so two weeks later, we're going to do kind of the same thing with a job description, right? Uh, next week, we, we, uh, we're going to release a book, uh, a mini book. Uh, the, the first one is like uh, speaking their language. So how to sign like music to a developers here. So uh, we, we're building it right now. We, we got quite some traction there. So uh, if you go on the, the Tech Jargon uh, website, you should be able to uh, uh, get uh, register for, um, you should be able to register and get uh, 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 the book when it's going to be out. And uh, and then the next book indeed will come a bit later um, uh, this month. So understanding the jargon, so the ult ultimate technical jargon glossary, and then and that's it. So that was my my part. Uh, and if you if you want to know about the training more, so you can go on the Tech Jargon we website, which is below. We have uh, the the master class, which is basically three days split over three weeks so uh, uh and that's basically it takes you from uh learning the jargon applying that on 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 job description and 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 and, and cvs and then actually get a real certificate at the end of the session that prove that you acquire the knowledge and you apply that in real sessions right and uh the the next session is on 15th of october yeah that's it so i put all my energy there because we love what we, we do at Hackages. So, um, yeah, follow us on, on, on LinkedIn. Uh, we have many ways to, to stay in touch. Um, we have an amazing team working behind this product. So uh, if you want to know more, reach out to Arno, Zenel, Kate. And let's see the final score for the, 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 the last session. So I'm just going to put it again here. And be able to see what we got there so arno chris is much higher whoa okay okay very good very good claudia 31 fantastic kelly okay much better right second woo second run was as someone from movie five just said movie five 22 okay very good people 